Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Over Hall Sandbox, Synchrobal Space Program 1.12, pondering my Aerospike Scramjet space plane. I realized that it might be possible to replace the Aerospikes with nuclear engines. Here we have the Nerval ones, but they're really too big and don't provide enough thrust. So I saw these SNTP engines, which I think are particle bed nuclear reactors, and these provide enough thrust while not taking up that much space and were light enough that I could put it on the tail, though I suspected that they might be a little bit optimistic in terms of their size and mass, but uh, we'll go with them for now because they are official realism overhaul nuclear engines and I had to figure out where we would start the nuclear engines and how long we would use the scramjet and that's part of the optimization. But the idea is that the aerospikes required a whole lot of liquid oxygen, uh, really about 140 tons worth. And so if we get rid of the liquid oxygen by using engines that don't need them, like nuclear engines, uh, then that will mean that we can lift off of the runway easier and then also get to higher speeds with the scramjet before switching to the rocket engines. Here I'm taking off for the first time with this new configuration and we are a little bit squirrely on the runway. It's tough to keep it heading in the right direction. Uh, but we do lift off at a lower speed than previously, which is good. It's always a relief. And trying not to scrape the body flap while we're at it. Uh, yep, there we go. But this first attempt uh, turned out to be a little bit problematic as the overheating on the scramjet does tend to creep up on me, and in this case it led to disaster, which we will see momentarily there. Uh, yeah, I have to really manage the throttling very carefully, especially in the low scramjet mode, otherwise it just overheats and explodes. So, yeah, needed to try again there, and here we go. This time it wanted to nose up right there while I was sitting around, but eventually the jet engines corrected that. And here we go, all over the place again. So I sort of did in my head calculations that made me realize that replacing the aerospikes with nuclear engines was potentially feasible within a certain percentage of orbital speed, but I couldn't be sure whether we could get fast enough with the scramjet and use a minimum amount of liquid hydrogen with the jet ramjet and scramjet combination that we could get to orbit with the nuclear engines. So I have to test that. That's the goal here. I had no idea whether it would work out or not or exactly how to transition between the various modes given our changed mass, right? Previously I had used the uh, aerospike scramjet and figured out things, but now it's a completely different mass. It's it's lost about a hundred tons. So that's quite a lot. It's dry mass is about a hundred tons too, so it's basically 100 tons dry mass, 100 tons of liquid hydrogen or something around there. And we had lost the liquid oxygen. So here we are switching to ramjet mode. And part of this is me making this video because I want a record of how I transition between the modes so that I can maybe improve upon it later on. And spoilers, this attempt doesn't work. So we are getting the numbers here, but this one as we top out at Mach 5 on the ramjet and prepare to use the scramjet. The scramjet is supersonic combustion ramjet, so it's structurally very different from the regular ramjets and has to be shaped a particular way for supersonic combustion to actually work because normally you have to slow the incoming air down to subsonic levels in order to have combustion work because combustion is about atoms actually interacting with each other. Uh, but supersonic combustion means you don't have to slow the airflow down, which allows you to get to greater speeds, but it's a bit tricky. And in real life, uh, well, we've seen some attempts, but whether they provide sufficient thrust for anything, still not yet, I think. Anyway, here we are accelerating. So in theory, it could work, but in practice, we have not seen a very good demonstration. Uh, there have been demonstrations of it but not at a level that would work for a space plane. So here we are getting to Mach 10. There is a low mode on the scramjet and a high mode for the scramjet. This is all, um, you know, I just wrote the numbers in and hope for the best kind of thing. Uh, there's no real life counterpart to this that this is supposed to be mimicking. 
So here we are in the high mode. For some reason, the sound from the scramjet stops when I switch to high mode. High mode guzzles a lot more propellant, but and it doesn't really get us that much faster. It gets us from like maybe Mach 10 point something to Mach 12 point something. But in the SPH, I had decided to switch to the rocket mode at a certain point when we hit a certain point with our liquid hydrogen. And so I stick to that. Actually, I don't stick to that here. I was going for 800,000 liters and we're below that. And I also thought that the nuclear engines would take a long time to spool up. It turns out that they didn't. So I had lit them thinking that they would take some time, like a minute or something like that, to get up to full thrust, but they didn't. So that pushed us uh, to switch between the scramjet and the rockets earlier than I thought. And because we don't make orbit this time, that's something I avoid next time. So next time I'll plan that more properly. I thought I was thinking ahead there, but it turned out that the uh, nuclear engines, these types, the SNTP slash PPEs, operate differently than I thought. So I bring it as close as possible and we end up about 400 meters per second short. Keeping in mind though, that we also need to reserve propellant for coming back down. Now, in the previous video, I tried to avoid using nuclear engines in the atmosphere. Obviously, in this case, we are and there'll be objections. This is not meant to be a serious proposal, folks. But if you were to take this seriously, and I didn't make any sub substantial changes there because even removing some engines didn't actually improve our Delta V much. So I decided that I would just try to fly it better and transition a little bit better this time. Uh, but if you do take it seriously though, uh, we could let the reactors cool off while, as that was all over the place on the runway, uh, could let the reactors cool off in orbit for a little while. Uh, just like the X-37B hangs out in orbit for like uh, hundreds of days, this could hang out in orbit after, and it would be only payload. Uh, even though we're carrying Kerbals here, I'm envisioning that the nuclear one would only carry payload so that nobody gets irradiated or anything. And carrying the payload, it release the payload, and it hang out in orbit, let the reactors cool down, use its RCS to deorbit, and then come back down. So, if we were to take this seriously, that would be the mission mode. And I, I, I'm looking at this and trying to test it, trying to figure out whether I should make a formal model of it with the cockpit replaced by a cargo bay instead. And then we would have a much better integrated system with the nuclear engines. Instead of having six on the tail, we would have two. And actually, I'd probably move the jet engines inward and put them on the tail and instead have the nuclear engines uh, further out. Anyway, here we are transitioning uh, to scramjet mode. Again, very dicey because it overheats very quickly. You can see I've throttled down a little bit. I'm trying to throttle down enough so that the thrust doesn't kill us. Uh, the 100% thrust is important at higher altitudes, but at lower altitudes we don't need quite as much thrust. It tends to overheat if you do that. So anyway, here we are passing Mach 10 almost, uh, about to pass Mach 10. And the goal here was to stay in each mode for as long as possible because each subsequent mode takes a uh, lot more fuel, so or at least fuel per second. There's fuel per second and fuel per amount of acceleration, right? So these are two competing things that you would have to optimize for. Uh, in this case, I was just caring about the propellant flow per second and trying to stay in the lower modes in order to avoid consuming too much there. But of course, if we stay in the lower mode like we are doing here, our acceleration slows down quite a lot. At some point, you're going to have to give up and switch. So I switched to the higher scramjet mode and then ultimately get past Mach 12, 12.2, which is an improvement on what we did before. And we're also looking at the surface velocity there, seeing it creep up. But yes, even with the efficiency of the nuclear engines, they don't get the same kind of efficiency as these air breathing engines do. So here we go with the nuclear engines lit. And I also decided to go steeper this time so a lot more pitch in the hope that that would be more optimal in this case, you know, getting out of the drag of the atmosphere. And ultimately we fall just shy of orbit thanks to residuals. Well, maybe not just residuals, but in any case, 
if we're gonna be carrying payload and we want to come back down this is not good enough but I think maybe we can rework the bodies so that I can carry more liquid hydrogen uh, instead of having a flat top actually sort of bulk up the top of the vehicle so I'm gonna be creating a radically new model probably for this and that new model will hopefully help us get to orbit but is it worth it I don't know I don't know, what do you think? Shall we continue pursuing the nuclear scramjet? Or is this a dangerous and lost cause? Anyway, with that question, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.